So now, what if the equation that you're given to calculate the delta H for is not one that has metals and non-metals in it, it's ionic, right? Well, it doesn't have that lattice energy going then because it's not an ionic compound. So, so what do you actually do to figure out how you get the change in the heat for this reaction? When H2, uh, which is a gas at room temperature, is reacted with oxygen gas at room temperature to be able to form two water molecules. Now, you still need to know bond energies uh, because what you need to do is break apart the H's from each other and the O's from each other and then recombine all of this to be able to form two H2O's according to this balanced equation. So in order to do that, you need a table that gives you bond energies and that will be provided for you to answer a question like this. And here's how you use that. So, you know that H2 really is two H's bonded together. And so that bond right there has a representation of energy ascribed to it of 432 kilojoules. That's how much energy it takes to break that bond between the hydrogens. Now, by the way, that two in front means you've actually got two of these, right, with that heat. So the amount of energy you're going to need to be able to break apart those hydrogens is really 432 times two. Does that make sense? Now take a look at the oxygen. The oxygen here is O2. Now your bond energy table is going to have oxygen bonded to oxygen. It has a certain number, about 150 or something. But the O double bonded to O is a number of 495. Now how do you know it's double bonded? Just wait. We're going to talk about that in a second. So here's the thing. You really need to be told, unless you are now past the point where you've learned how to do this, you need to be told, if you're just encountering this for the first time and you don't know how to put molecules together yet, somebody's going to tell you that that's a double bond. Then you're going to check the chart and say, well, that's a 495 kilojoules. And since we only have one O2 to break apart, that's the amount of energy there that's required. When you take that total amount of energy, that number times two, and add it to this number here, that's the total amount of energy it requires to be able to dissociate those bonds from each other, the oxygen, oxygen, and the hydrogen, hydrogens, and be able to scramble them all up as individual atoms that now will recombine to be able to form H2O. H2O looks like this. It's a bent molecule. Don't worry about that yet. And it's, it's made this way, where the two hydrogens are bonded to the oxygen. Now, that bond there is given an energy of 467 kilojoules, experimentally determined. So now, 467 kilojoules there, but guess what? There's another one there. So it's that number times two, but not really, because you know that this here means that there's two of these water molecules, so guess what? That is going to be... It's going to be... 432 kilojoules required here times 2, and 495 kilojoules. Add those together and make those numbers positive. Why? Because energy is required. But now here's the technique that I employ here. And I just use common sense. I say energy required, positive numbers, add them together. On the product side, all of these bonds are forming. So energy is released. Take the bond energy from a table that you're given, which always is the amount of energy required to break a bond. But when the bond is formed, energy is released, so you make that negative. Well, you don't put it there, though. It's kind of like that, right? Negative 467 kilojoules. What does that mean now? There are one, two, three, four of those bonds forming, so it's this number times four. This number was times two add it to this, but make this a negative and times it by four, and that's how much energy total is released. What's the change between the two? All you have to do is this. Take all of this, and now add it to all of this, and these are negatives, and then you're going to get the amount of heat here, the delta H, that's going to reflect whether more energy was released or required to be able to make this equation. And when you add all these together, you actually get this negative 509 kilojoules, which means that the net amount of energy in this reaction here is a loss of 509 kilojoules. More energy is actually produced than required to be able to do this here. So use your table of bond energies to be able to calculate 
delta H's. There's another way to do that too called using molar heat of formation table and that's when we talk about the chemical energetics unit later. But for now, use the bond energies in this method to be able to do the calculation.